I want to open up with the book of Micah, chapter 2, and I'll read. Woe to them that devise iniquity and work evil upon their beds. When the morning is light, they practice it because it is in the power of their hand. So who has the power in their hand? Because the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. So the wicked, the wicked in the Bible is Esau, Edom, the Edomites. That's the so-called white man, okay? Some people don't like that, but I'm not into someone's emotions. I'm into the truth, okay? Rest assured, in the Heavenly Father's name, Yahweh, because his name is not Jesus Christ, okay? Because the letter J did, was not established till the 1700s. Okay, so that's a, 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 a disorderly dispute with some people. All right. But anyway, um, so who's working, uh, like I said, who's working evil upon their beds? And what do they do? Because I have a video here that's very interesting because I'm in the in the Philippines and uh Esau has come here and, and covered fields and and have taken uh, the resources and the lands and have his military forces here and have uh, congregated with, uh, with the government here and what they have done is brought a strong very strong image of Roman Catholicism. Very strong. Okay? Which he's done this all over the earth. Alright? So I'll read the book of Psalms chapter 73 and I'll read verse 6. Therefore pride compassed them about as a chain. Violence covered them as a garment. Their eyes stand out with fatness. They have more than their heart could wish. Okay? So the wicked have more than their hearts can wish. All right? They, they, they vow violence have covered them as a garment because everywhere they go, that's what they bring. They bring violence. And I'm going to keep reading in Micah. And they cover the fields and take them by violence and houses and take them away so that they oppress a man in his house even a man in his heritage because they um, confuse a lot of people a lot of confusion okay because thus says the Lord remember uh, the ancient days okay you're supposed to remember where you come from some people like to say well it don't matter but I'm not some people. I'm here to say, thus says the Lord. Matter of fact, I'll read that in the book of Deuteronomy. And this is actually for the Israelites, but um, it, it definitely subscribes to uh, the wicked and what they've done in the atrocities that they have uh, opposed on the earth. Okay, so Deuteronomy 32 and 7. Remember the days of old. Consider the many, uh, the years of many generations. Salakia. Ask thy father and he will show thee and thy elders and they will tell thee. So you're supposed to remember the ancient days. Okay. Because uh, thus says the Lord. Okay which is uh, his name is Yahweh because Lord in Paleo Hebrew means Yahweh and the, the uh, beloved son Yahweh Shai is uh, uh, who, ignor who people ignorantly call Jesus Christ so I'm going to read in Micah 2 and 3 therefore thus says the Lord behold against this family do I devise an evil which ye should not remove your necks neither shall ye go heartily uh, for this time is evil 
verse 4. In that day shall one take up a parable against you and lament with a doleful lamentation and say, We be utterly spoiled. He have changed the portion of my people. How have he removed it from me? Turning away, he have divided our fields. Okay, so this is what Esau has not only done to the Israelites, he has also opposed this on other nations. Okay, bringing uh, mass uh, confusion. Okay, so I'm going to play this video and I'm going to let it speak for itself. My name is Joshua Petrukat, your host. Welcome to Hidden History, where we will talk about events in our history that are usually not covered in our textbooks. Today, I'm going to talk about the Philippine-American War. The Philippine-American War was a war between the U.S. and Filipino revolutionaries officially from 1899 to 1902. However, fighting really continued until 1913. After the Spanish-American War, the Treaty of Paris in 1898 was signed which gave the U.S. control of the entire Philippines archipelago, Puerto Rico, and Guam which were previously controlled by Spain. During the Spanish-American War, the Filipinos were told by the Americans that they would be granted independence after the war if they helped fight against the Spanish. They rebelled against Spain before and they thought that their struggle for independence was similar to the American Revolution and the struggle for independence from Britain. So they believed that the Americans would understand and let them be a sovereign nation. The American Navy destroyed the Spanish Navy at Manila Bay in May 1898. In June, Emilio Aguinaldo, a Filipino leader, declared independence and set up a constitutional government. When the Spanish surrendered Manila, the Americans would not allow the Filipinos to enter the city, which caused tensions. In Manila, American soldiers entered people's homes without a warrant and stole goods from stores, which is parallel to the behavior. Oh, I gotta, I gotta pause that because you, 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 did you guys hear that? What the American soldiers did? Okay. And I, I, I tell you, you, you know, this is uh, the book of Habakkuk, chapter 2, and verse 3. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him. So, Whose soul is not upright in him? That's Esau Edom, the so-called white man. Okay, because this racial tension is being lifted up all over the earth. People are looking and, and, and revealing, because his skirt has been lifted, who has caused all this uh, uh, atrocities and all this... Uh, 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 violence all this thievery slaughtered people okay all over the earth stealing people resources the devil lying the devil on who he is uh, slandering the, the children of Israel and also other nations the devil the devil that the Bible speaks of. And the earth, quite frankly, is, is getting tired. They they are. People are getting tired of this, this man. Because it is a man. Okay? Spiritually uh, conformed in the flesh of a man. Okay? I'll read. But the just shall live by faith. Ye also, because he transgressed by wine, he is a proud man. Neither keep it at home. Okay? Because he don't stay home. 
he go all over the earth a persecuting people. Okay? Persecuting uh, uh, countries. Persecuting uh, 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 the righteous people, which are the people of, of the Lord, which are the Israelites. Okay? He said, uh, Habakkuk. Okay? Uh, who enlarged his desire as hell and is as death and cannot be satisfied but gather unto him all nations and heap it unto him all people shall not all these take up a parable against him and a taunting proverb against him and say woe to him that increase it that which is not his how long and to him that laden Himself with thick clay. Shall they not rise up suddenly that shall bite thee and awake that shall vex thee and thou shalt be for a Buddhist unto them because thou hast spoiled many nations and all the remnant of the people shall spoil thee because of man's blood and for the violence of the land, of the cities, and of all that dwell therein. Woe to him that covered an evil covenant to his house, that he may sit his nest on high, that he may be delivered from the power of evil. Thou hast cons consulted shame to thy house by cutting off many people and has sinned against thy soul okay he said if you look at the history of the so called white man who is Esau Edom in the bible he's vile he's wicked cause in Job 9.24 like I said earlier, the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. He covered up the faces of the judges. Because if you look at my background picture, that's what uh, Yahweh Shai looked like, who people ignorantly call Jesus. That's the imagery uh, that's read in the Bible. Matter of fact, I'm going to read that. Since I mentioned it, let's get that in Revelations. Because Revelations means to reveal. Okay, so I'll get that, then I'll continue. Because this is a, a spiritual uh, lesson here. The revelation of the verse 1, chapter 1, verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ. I'll read it uh, verbatim which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he said and sanctified it by his angel unto his servant John, who bared record of the word of God and the testimony of ignorantly called Jesus Christ, Yahweh Shai, and of all things that he saw, he saw, he saw, okay? This is verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool. So he had woolly hair, white woolly hair, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. If you go to Genesis 49 and 12, it'll tell you why his eyes were of a flame of fire. Okay? And his feet like unto fine brass. Brass is a depiction of brown. Okay? Anybody with common sense will know that. Okay? As if they burned in a furnace. Okay? And his voice as the sound of many waters. Because Christ, who we call Christ, uh, uh, the Messiah, spoke loud. 
So he was a dark skinned man. All right, but I'm going to continue with the video. Native English soldiers in Boston in 1775. Since the Americans wanted to conquer the Philippines and they only had control of Manila while the rest was controlled by Filipino revolutionaries, conflict between the two parties was inevitable. The U.S. claimed that they were liberators in the Philippines, but they were really just trying to conquer it because of three main reasons. Number one, to have a military base in Asia where they could project American power. Number two, to have access to Asian markets where they could sell American products in places like China. Number three, to control natural resources of the Philippines such as rice, coffee, sugar, and tobacco. This is extremely ironic because America at that time was preaching about its democracy and self-determination, which means the right of all people to be independent and set up their own governments. The reality was that the U.S. wanted to be a world power and was practicing imperialism. This is part of the reason why we don't hear so much about this war. The other reason we don't hear much about this war is because of the way this war was conducted. In November 1901, a reporter for the Philadelphia Ledger who was in the Philippines wrote, Our men have been relentless, have killed to exterminate men, women, children, prisoners and captives, active insurgents and suspected people from the lads of 10 up. The idea prevailing that the Filipino as such was little better than a dog. Letters from American soldiers who were there also revealed what was going on. Leonard F. Adams of the Washington Regiment wrote, I don't know how many men, women, and children the Tennessee boys did kill. They would not take any prisoners. Fred D. Sweet of the Utah Light Battery wrote, The scene reminded me of shooting jackrabbits in Utah. Only the jackrabbits sometimes got away, but the insurgents did not. Horrible racist terms were used by the Americans to describe the Filipino people. And President McKinley claimed that after praying to God, it came to him that the U.S. should take all of the Philippines to civilize them. Torture was also used and sometimes innocent people were pulled out of villages and tortured to get information. Entire villages were destroyed and crops burned to starve people and to prevent them from helping Filipino soldiers. Concentration camps were set up for civilians and many people were executed and many more were starved to death and succumbed to disease. Aguinaldo was captured in 1901 and the war officially ended in July 1902. However, a guerrilla war known as the Moro Rebellion against the American imperialists occurred until 1913. The Philippine-American War was a conflict between the American imperialists and the Filipino nationalists who only wanted freedom. In our very own history book that we use for 8th grade U.S. history, the book has 1,171 words covering the Spanish-American War, which lasted three months and in which 400 American soldiers died. However, in the same history book, there are 164 words covering the Philippine-American War, which officially lasted three years, and if you count to the years of sporadic fighting after that, it was 11 more years. 4,000 American soldiers died, 20,000 Filipino soldiers died, and 250,000 Filipino civilians died. History is important since it teaches us to learn from our mistakes. It can help us become a better country and better people. However, if we ignore some parts of our history, we will not learn from these mistakes. Thank you for watching. I'm going to read the book of Revelations, chapter 6, and verse 4. And there went out another horse that was red. The red heart, the red uh, horse is represented for power. Red is represented for um, Esau Edom because the first came out red. They're not white. This screen is white. That's red because their blood showed through their foreskin. And power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth. And there they should kill one another and there was given unto him a great sword so that great sword is the atomic bombs that he he dropped on japan okay that that shook the the world and the other nations and uh made them afraid 
And that's when he started more so coming with dropping sanctions and uh, coming with uh, his military uh, even more so in uh, the Asia, uh, East Asia, South Asia, okay? And also uh, other other countries. So I'm going to read verse 8 and then I'm going to close out. And I looked and beheld a pale horse. The Most High is describing this, this horse pale now. Okay. And his name that sat on him was death and hell followed with him. So we just seen in the video where he brought hell, death. Okay. He said, uh, and hell followed with him and power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with the sword so he had the great sword that was that he was blessed with okay and here he's saying to kill with the sword and with hunger and with death and with the beasts of the earth I want to give all praise and honor to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. And I want to thank the Heavenly Father again for the, the brothers that's out there teaching and preaching throughout the earth. That's teaching with uh, sincere work and great diligence, risking their lives. And thanking, I want to also, excuse me, thank the, the Battle Axe, my brothers that's out in Dallas, uh, Texas. And uh, I'm going to close out and and thanks for the great listeners. And uh, I just want to say Shalom. I hope this was edifying to the people.